Gentlemen, gentlemen from uh, South Carolina is recognized. Mr. Fry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's good to be here. I appreciate you, Chairman, holding this, this hearing right here at the center of our border crisis. To the good people of Yuma, thank you for having us. Thank you for showing us. Uh, I'm a freshman, so this has uh, been incredibly eye-opening for me. You know, Mr. Chairman, I, I remember our first, my first committee hearing this year, first one ever, when the ranking member said that we were imagining a border crisis. My first question to the good people of Yuma, are you imagining a border crisis? Is the border secure here in Yuma? Has the border gotten worse under President Biden? And final question, do you think this administration has faithfully executed their obligation to secure that border? No. Hell no. <laughs> we got a hell no. Thank you to the panel from the short time we've been here in Yuma. Um, one thing is very crystal clear to me, and is that President Biden's open door, open border policy is an abject failure uh, to the people of this country. We have seen firsthand the prioritization by this administration of illegal immigrants over the people of America. Um, illegal immigration, obviously, you know this here in Yuma more than anyone else. It deprives your community of safety in your homes and in your community of health care. It costs the taxpayers billions of dollars. It destroys property farmers where you at, and it destroys families through fentanyl poisoning. Congressional Democrats should be here, Mr. Chairman. It's actually a shame uh, that we were imagining a border crisis, but everything that we've seen thus far proves exactly that we are not, that, that you see it. And of course, in my home state of South Carolina, as has been talked about, we are a border state. Myrtle Beach is not just famous for its beaches and Chinese spy balloons. It's also... <laughs> It also has record fentanyl overdoses that happen year after year. The first question uh, to the sheriff, what federal policies were in place under the prior administration that really helped, in your opinion, secure that border? You know, and I, I thank you for that question because I also told the Secretary of Mayorkas the same thing. The uh, Operation Streamline was, and that was 100% prosecution for anybody that entered this country between a port of entry and denied them the access. Do you do you th would you say that the Biden administration has been enabled or has been able to control the cartels in two years? No, sir. What policies do you think promote or enable the cartels to to act more freely uh, across the border and or even in our country? Well, when they removed the migrant protection protocols that were put into place, plus Operation Streamline, and they got away from any kind of prosecution at all, that just enabled the cartels to do what they're doing today, and they continue to escalate in their capabilities. Mr. Lyons, you, you tweeted back in January that the border was 100 percent not secure, uh, that it was wide open. Uh, do you believe that's still to be the case? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, in both you and, your, and the sheriff's experience, um, what are you seeing from real-world impacts that you're hearing from people out here in the community that are happening from a crime perspective or a cartel perspective in their homes or neighborhoods? Uh, we've had some home invasions. Uh, those were few and far between just because Border Patrol has been able to interdict. Uh, yesterday morning, one of the farmers you heard from this morning testified that his daughter uh, was returning home from feeding her 4-H uh, project and was almost hit by a van full of people being smuggled across the border. Uh, so we continue to see those types of instances. Uh, he's had two of those experiences in the last six months. Um, one of the things that I, and I apologize, but uh, I should have addressed when Mr. Klein asked, but it's been a negative impact in our community, is the ability of 911 services to respond adequately. Uh, and that's been a severe challenge. I met with the first responders from every group in uh, Yuma, and they shared with me their concern or the ability to be able to respond when they continue to receive a high volume of 911 calls from the border. Now, not all of those people were actually looking for medical assistance. They were simply tired of waiting to be processed because they had somewhere to go and some place to be. So that has affected the people of this community. And I was absolutely blown away to hear them tell me that. Uh, they do not care about the value of life, and that is something directly related to the cartels. Sheriff, what, what, what instances have you heard from the residents here in Yuma of, of crime or cartel activity? T talk about that. Have you heard these uh, similar instances? 
Absolutely, sir, and you, you can refer to my document that I submitted as well. Uh, my jail already this last year had over 55 individuals booked into custody that had uh, entered this country illegally and committed uh, exploitation of minors, their trespassing, the uh, smuggling of uh, narcotics, not only for use but for sale and trade. That's the majority of what I have in, in my jail right now for those kind of offenses. Mr. Fry, over at uh, Amberley's place, our youngest victim coming in for a sexual assault was 10 years old. The challenge is that we don't know in which country it occurred and by whom. So we're able to collect the data, but because of jurisdictional challenges, there's no one to prosecute. So a 10-year-old was violated by someone under cartel control or by the cartel itself. And just here uh, at Morales Dam, uh, Congressman Biggs and I have had the opportunity to walk around and pick up Plan B, and that was an area commonly referred to as the rape tree. So many people coming across were victims of the cartel where they exacted that last price and denied them their dignity.